Hey there, it's Samantha Mo. Thank you so much for joining me today. I feel very grateful that you spent some time to learn more about how to help your kids show gratitude. That's what you're going to learn about here today, how to help your kids develop a sense of gratitude using the five love languages. Now, if you haven't heard about the five love languages, I strongly recommend doing a search and taking the online profile test. The love languages help you understand ways that people feel loved and ways that you show your own love. And so this is really important if you're looking to develop a deeper bond in your family. And the reason that we're going to talk about gratitude is because kids don't inherently have a sense of gratitude. It's one of the reasons that mindfulness practices are so needed in this world is that we are reliant on our parents because we know that they help keep us safe and they help keep us healthy. And hopefully they help us to feel loved as well and meet that emotional need. But kids don't know how important it is to show that appreciation and gratitude beyond the simple politeness of saying thank you for helping them out with something or preparing dinner. And when you dedicate so much time and energy and effort to raising your children, gratitude is something that helps keep the wheels turning, where when you have those difficult moments, it makes it worthwhile when you hear some gratitude from your child. So let's dive into the five love languages, understanding how you can model the love language and how to express gratitude using each love language, how to talk to your kids about it, as well as inspire some action so they actually put some tracks down on the road and develop these skills. The first love language is words of affirmation. So this is simply saying nice things and using your words in order to help somebody know that you love them love them so the way to demonstrate excuse me the way to demonstrate this love language is to spend some time together saying something nicely and so something nice that you could say beyond just thank you is model to your child five reasons why you're grateful they did something let's say they picked up their toys when you only asked them one time and you might say, I'm grateful that you picked up your toys the first time because it shows you're a good listener, because I can tell that cleaning up is important to you, because it makes our home a nice place, because I get to save my breath, and so I'm really grateful for that because then we can have energy to do more fun things together, and so on and so forth until you reach five reasons why you're grateful. And then you want to ask your child, how does it feel to hear that? And they're going to say something like, oh, good, or they're just going to be smiley. And you're going to encourage them and ask them and say, you know what? I wonder who else would like to hear nice things about them. Can you think of anybody? And let's say they say, well, grandma might like that. And you'd say, great. What's one thing you love about grandma? And then help them generate five reasons that they're grateful for grandma or why they love that she does certain things or bees with your child in a certain way together and then encourage them to follow through and take action on it. The second love language is spending quality time. So you can model this by having snuggly time with your child, making sure you're unplugged, not multitasking, and really being present with them. Now you've, you've probably done some of this. You spend quality time playing with your child, and this is the same thing. It could be playing, it could be snuggling, it could be um, going for a walk together and the point of the quality time is to make sure that you're authentically connecting that you're really hearing them hearing their concerns being excited for them if they're excited and having sincerity in how you show up with them and then you can ask them how does this feel when we get to spend time together of course you're going to ask them is there anybody else you think that would like to feel this way and maybe they say yes but my auntie lives in another state and you can encourage them to make a phone call or do some FaceTime or a Skype session to really be present and spend some quality time with their auntie. All right, the third love language is physical affection. And so this is touch. This is when you're passing through the living room while they're doing their homework and you've got to go do a load of laundry to put your hand on their shoulder and just look over their shoulder and see what they're looking at. You don't even have to say anything or interrupt them. You could put your hand on their lower back if you're walking past them and they're in the kitchen and talking on the telephone. 
or you can spend some time snuggling in bed or on the couch together. And then you want to ask them, you want to say, how does this feel? What do you like about it? Hmm, I wonder who else would like this snuggly time together. And then encourage them to follow through on that. What this is doing is it's showing your child how to show their gratitude and appreciation for somebody else using, so far, the first three love language. How do you show gratitude and appreciation? You connect through words. You spend time together. You use physical affection. And if you're a parent who's thinking, my child never says anything about how appreciative they are, that might be a clue that you're a words of affirmation love language person. And so when you model that and you specifically call it out and you say, wow, that feels so good, it encourages your child to do more of that. You can be explicit. It's okay to ask for what you need when it comes to feeling loved. Moving into our final two love language, number four is receiving gifts. And I have an aunt in rural Wisconsin who's amazing at gift giving. She sends me home with food. She wants to load me up with candy. It's, it's really hilarious, actually, as an adult, because I thought that was just something that would happen when I was a child. And what I know is that while receiving gifts is not one of my top three love languages, I know it's her love language. So I make sure I bring something whenever I go to visit my aunt so that she can feel I love her in return. And I'm a big quality time person. So sometimes I think, well, just showing up should be enough. But when you understand love languages, you realize it's not just about giving in your language, but giving in somebody else's language too. A really easy way to do this with children is to teach them to write thank you notes. Now you can understand immediately that that's a way for them to show gratitude because they're saying thank you in the note. But have them be specific about what they're thankful for and you can wrap up some of what you learned earlier with the five reasons you're grateful. Have them write a note about them, about those things, and it's okay to help them. Make sure you ask them, how does it feel to give this note? Or ask them, how does it feel to receive this note? Who else would like a note? And hold them accountable so they develop the skill of gratitude. And then finally, the fifth love language is acts of service. Now, my dad is amazing. This is his primary love language. And he will drop everything at 3 in the morning if a car is broken down on the side of the road for anybody within his family. And as a teenager, when I had four siblings who were also teenagers, this was a really big deal because my dad would, in the dead of winter, 20 degrees below zero in cold Minnesota, he would wake up at two in the morning and come meet us on the side of the road and change our tire and make sure he had the wool blanket so we could stay warm and bring some boots for us if they weren't already in our car. And with five kids, that was a lot of acts of service that he followed through on. And he does things like that to this day. So how do you do this on a smaller level with your child? Well, make sure you step in and help them with something that they don't enjoy doing. If your child doesn't like picking up their toys, help them one day and ask them, how did it feel to have mom, me, mommy, help pick up your toys? Good, I like that. And you, can, and you can say, well, why did you like that? Why did that feel so good? And come to a deeper understanding of, well, it saved time, it saved my energy, I didn't have to feel crabby, I like spending time with you. And then ask them, who could you help in our house that could really use it? Is there something your brother doesn't like to do that you could help him with? We could surprise him. I bet he would love that. Let's see how that goes. And so if you have a younger kid, you're going to encourage them in the way I just described. But with an older kid, maybe you wouldn't give so much information and you would truly just ask them the questions and see if they can come up with something on their own. A lot of times they're going to come up with something better that they're actually motivated to help their sibling with. And it won't feel like a chore. It will actually feel like an act of service out of gratitude, love, and appreciation for their sibling. Now, I'm so curious to hear from you. Do you know your love language? If so, share your top love language in the comments section below and describe what do you do to help your child learn gratitude. Now, I hope you're modeling gratitude because that's the first step. Kids learn from what you do and how you be, how you show up with them. And since we're in a community and we all learn from one another, I would be so grateful if you share that strategy that you see works well in your family for developing thanks, thankfulness, devotion, and gratitude. 
I appreciate you watching your Mad to Glad tip of the week. I look forward to catching you next time. I'm so thankful for spending time with you here today. I'll see you later.